Hello family and friends, and welcome to our boring meditation stuff, the conversation about meditation and our current species-wide state of crippling anxiety. <laughs> um, today, uh, the title is probably a bit strange, this um, getting stoned, uh, but I think that this is a, a topic that's really worth addressing. Um, I'm not talking about drugs. I am still talking about meditation. Um, there is a very real consequence of serious meditation, which is that it can feel like you are getting stoned. It can feel on occasion like a bit of an acid trip or something like that. And a really unfortunate consequence of this is that um, a non-trivial number of people wind up taking this for the goal uh, that we should be looking for these um, these kind of drug-like experiences, these spiritual experiences, these uh, experiences of altered states of consciousness, whatever you want to call them. Um, and today's uh, topic is very simply a warning against this. It's hard, it's difficult to warn against this because um, prior to having one of these experiences, people won't believe. People won't believe, oh, meditation, it can give you an experience like an acid trip. And not only an acid trip, but an acid trip that lasts for days and days. Um, or an MDMA trip or, or whatever the case may be. Um, these Feelings are not necessarily bad feelings. So um, if your perception is deeply changed and the way that you relate to the world around you, the people around you, the creatures around you um, might transform such that you feel a sort of unbounded love and curiosity and fascination, um, that's all fine. It is the danger is really when we get caught up in the, the chase for this thing. It becomes a new kind of craving. And I did meet one fellow on one Vipassana course. It was actually an old student's course and he clearly had this sort of experience at least once. Um, and it was at the end of the course and, uh, and he, he had seen a few people, maybe more than a few, going outside and uh, looking at the trees and looking at the moss and maybe looking at a bug with utter fascination. Um, and he openly admitted, uh, he said, I want that. Like, oh, I see all these people, they're, they're having these experiences and I want that. Um, and this is really ultimately uh, the opposite of the purpose of meditation. Meditation is not there to get you high. It is not there to get you stoned. It is to alter your perceptions, certainly, but to alter them for your benefit and for the benefit of others. So you should be coming away from meditation uh, kinder, gentler, um, you can have this fascination with nature, with the creatures of nature, with other people. That's perfectly okay. Um, but if you don't have it, uh, it shouldn't become a source of craving for you um, because that obviously carries its own set of problems. Whether you're craving for alcohol and drugs or some other sensory experience or whether you're craving for meditation and the consequences or experiences of meditation is totally irrelevant. Um, the craving itself, the desire for those outcomes um, is identical. And, uh, and this, is, this, is quite a, this is quite a significant risk, but um, thankfully, I <laughs> wanna say thankfully, um, I'm going to say thankfully, Thankfully, this is one of the early stage temptations 
that you'll find in meditation. There are many temptations, right? Many distractions within the confines of meditation itself where you can say, oh, this is very interesting. Like, let me go explore this. Um, and we can get bound up in these things um, in the same way that a person can get bound up in anything else. So a person gets addicted to TV or a person gets addicted to intoxicants. Um, a person gets addicted to social media these days. I think that's the usual go-to example. Um, you can also become sort of addicted to these outcomes. The difficulty, of course, is that when you start craving for these sorts of outcomes, they no longer occur, uh, usually. Um, at least that's been my experience. So you will wind up craving for a thing that you can't have, which is quite different from the, um, the scenario of the alcoholic. The alcoholic can almost always get his hands or her hands on more alcohol and um, the effects of the alcohol become diminishing, diminishing. Um, it's, it's really the opposite with meditation where you find yourself craving for the effects of meditation, the outcomes of meditation, and now they're no longer there. Um, and this sort of magic kind of fades away, but not because you're overdosing on meditation. You're not really meditating at all at that point. Um, you're just indulging some craving. So uh, I think that uh, part of the reason that Anapana meditation is taught to children is that Anapana meditation rarely it rarely contains this sort of temptation. Um, it's it's a bit like the kinds of temptations that we permit children, right? You go to the movie theater and you might give them a chocolate or a popcorn. Um, Anapana meditation has similar dangers, perhaps, where it's like, yeah, you can get really excited by um, having a nice bit of chocolate, but I'm not going to lose my mind over pursuing it. Um, it is deeper meditations and deeper meditation uh, states which leave us with this sort of craving but it's important to be aware of them in advance so that you can sort of um, prepare yourself and say oh, okay once I get to this point I will pursue meditation for the value of meditation not for the um, array of pleasures or curiosities that it can perhaps provide me I hope that everyone is taking good care of themselves and I hope that everyone is taking good care of everyone around them. I uh, look forward to speaking to you tomorrow. Um, tomorrow's topic is going to be a bit stranger. So let's see how it goes. All right. <laughs> everyone take care. Goodbye.